Welcome in engineering materials and metallurgy subject. Today we are discussing about the topic of our subject that is solid solutions. So in this uh, session we will cover the what is meant by solid solution. Then uh, what is a substitutional solid solution? What is Umerothery rule? Then what is interstitial solid solution? What is intermediate phases, etc. So, solid solution or an alloy is a phase where two or more elements are completely soluble in each other. So, solid solutions have important commercial and industrial applications. As such, mixtures often have superior properties to pure material. Many metals or metal alloys are solid solutions. For example, copper nickel. So there are two materials or metals that is copper and nickel. When we combine it, there will be the solution form called as a solid solution. Then AUAG is also example of solid solution. In a solid solution, the metal in the major portion or proportion is called as a solvent or it is also called as a host or parent or matrix. And the metal in the minor proportion is called as a solute. So two terms are here. One is a solvent. The maximum content is a solvent and a minimum content is the solute. Then there are two types of solid solutions. One is a substitutional solid solution and second is a interstitial solid solution. Now substitutional solid solution. So in this type of solid solution, the solute atoms substitute the atoms of solvent in the crystal structure of the solvent. So the substitutional solid solutions are generally ordered at lower temperature and disordered at higher temperature. So here in substitutional solid solution, temperature is the deciding factor. So in diagram, you can also see the, the solid solution that is a substitutional solid solution. So here the green atoms are a solvent metal atom and blue atoms are a solute element atom. So whenever they are combined, then it will be the solid solution called as a substitutional solid solution. There are two types of substitutional solid solution. One is ordered substitutional solid solution. And second one is a disordered substitutional solid solution. That is O triple S and D triple S. So ordered substitutional solution is nothing but in this type, the solute atoms substitute the solvent atoms in an orderly manner, taking a fixed position of symmetry in lattice. This solid solution has a uniform distribution of sol sol solute and solvent atoms. So here in this diagram, you can see the clearly visible the ordered substitutional solid solution where this uh, white atoms are parent atoms or solvent and substitutional atoms shown by the shaded region. So uh, the atoms are substitutional atoms are arranged or placed with the parent atom in a particular manner or in particular order. That's why it is called as a ordered substitutional solid solution. Next one is a disordered substitutional solid solution. So in this solid solution or in this type, the solute atoms do not occupy any fixed position, but are distributed at random in the lattice structure of solvent. The concentration of solute atoms 
vary considerably through the our out, throughout the lattice structure so here in diagram you can clearly visible the disordered substitution of solid solution where the substitution of atoms are situated anywhere randomly or any place related to the parent atoms so such type of sol solid solution is called as disordered substitution of solid solution next is a rule for formation of solid solution so whenever there will be a mixture of two metal for example copper and nickel so there will be some rules are there for the formation of the solid solution so the humeratory rule is the main rule of formation of solid solution so these are the rules which governs the formation of solid solution that is the humeratory rule that is the name of scientist in other word only when these rules are satisfied a substitutional solid solution is formed first so in humeratory rule there are certain factors that we are going to consider for the formation of the solid solution so first factor is a crystal structure factor so for complete solubility of two elements they should have the same type of crystal lattice for example eu he solution both should have a fcc structure means to form a solid solution the crystal structure should be same for two elements next is a relative size factor the atoms of solute and solvent should have the same atomic size approximately the factor is satisfied if the difference of atomic radii of two element is less than 15% so this is the second factor of humeratory rule that is a relative size factor third is a chemical affinity factor for a substitutional solid solution to be formed two metals should have a less chemical affinity greater is the chemical affinity lesser is the chance of forming solid solution if the two elements are further apart in periodic table chemical affinity is more next fourth factor is electro negativity so higher the electro negativity greater is the chance of forming the intermediate phase rather than the solid solution and electro negativity is the tendency to acquire electrons then fifth factor is a relative valence factor so among two metals which have satisfied all the above rules the metal with lower valency tends to dissolve more of the metal of higher valency and vice versa so that was about the substitution of solid solution now next is the interstitial solid solution so here these are formed when the atoms of of small atomic radii fit into the interstitial space of large solvent atoms so the atoms of elements such as carbon nitrogen boron hydrogen etc which have a radii less than 1 angstrom unit are likely to be form a interstitial solute atoms and may dissolve more readily in transition metals such as ferrous nickel manganese chromium etc then in other metals so here in diagram also you can clearly visible the interstitial solid solution so green atoms are a solvent metal atom and blue atoms are a solute element atom so the interstitial space is acquired by this solute element atom atoms for the solvent metal so these spaces are called as interstitial space and at that space the solute atoms are going to locate so such type of solid solution is called as a interstitial solid solution so the intermediate phases are there so intermediate phases are those phases whose chemical compositions are intermediate between the two pure metal and generally have a crystal structure different from those of the base metals an alloy can be made up of a solid solution phase entirely or can exist along with the intermediate phase an intermediate phase here is nothing but a compound and is made up of two or more element of which at least one of them is a metal a compound is a chemical comp combination of positive and negative 
valence element that is atoms of different elements are combined in a different proportions and are expressed by chemical formula like h2o nacl etc when a compound or intermediate phase is formed the element lose their individual identity and properties to a good extent and the compound will have its own characteristics physical mechanical and chemical properties there are three most commonly used intermediate alloy phases so first is a intermetallic or valency compounds second is a interstitial compounds and third one is a electron compound the intermetallic or valence compounds are when alloy phase are excessively metal to metal system they are called intermetallic compound these are formed between chemically dissimilar metals and are combined by following the rules of chemical valence the examples of intermetallic compounds are mg2pb mg2sn that is a magnesium lead then magnesium sanitin cac then cu2ac etc then interstitial compounds are these are the similar to interstitial solid solution except that they have more or less fixed compositions for example fe3c that is a cementite is a, a example of interstitial compound the interstitial compounds are metallic in nature and have a high melting point and are extremely hard then electron compound these are a variable compositions and do not obey the valence law but have a definite electron to atom ratio for example cual so each copper atoms have one valence electron and each aluminum atoms have three valence electron so 13 atoms which makes up a compound have a 21 valence electrons with electron to atom ratio 21 by or 21 as to 13 so the electron compounds have properties same as the those of the solid solution wide range of composition and high ductility and low hardness